Welcome to the Management System Database. In this tutorial, we're going to speak about triggers on a database level, on a table level, and on a field level. First, let's check the triggers on a database level. For that, let's first enable the admin mode and go to the section Options. Here we see the field Trigger After Open. This command will be triggered whenever the database is opened. Here we can put, for example, the function open table and the table name that we want to open. In this case, let's open the table invoices. Note that the table name needs to be exactly the same as written in your table. Now let's save and save changes. If we now close this database and open it again, we see that it is going to open the table invoices automatically. Now let's see the triggers on a table level. To access the trigger on a table level, open the added field section. You can find here the trigger on new record and trigger after update. The trigger on new record will be triggered whenever a new record is created while the trigger after update will be triggered whenever any of these fields is changed within the record. For our case, we will create an automatic numbering function to give us the invoice number. In this case, we already have the invoice ID, but this is simply getting the ID from the record. So, we see that if a new record is created, it is simply going to display the ID of the new record. This happens because whenever a record is deleted, the record ID doesn't go back to what it was before, so the number will always be growing. So if we want to have an actual count of our invoices, we will need to create one number field or in this case, let's put a text field. And this text field will be our invoice number. So we want our invoice number to be adjusted according to the amount of records that are created. So let's add our invoice number in our column here. And we see that for this first item, let's call it invoice 1, invoice 2, invoice 3, invoice 4, and invoice 5. So we want the next one to be invoice 6. Let's now put a trigger on new record here. So let's first assign the number of records that we have. So let C equal count, select invoices, and this will be the amount of records that we have with the one that is being created. So we want now the invoice number to be I and then the number. And let's save. So if we create a new record here, we see that the numbers will be invoice 6. We can also adjust our number to a different format so it can contain more digits. So in this case, let's insert the, the function format and then 000 to give us a better way of displaying this number for our record. So you see now it is invoice 007. If we want to go a little bit further and maybe do our calculation by year, we can also do that by inserting some functions here. In this case, let's go here and first let's assign the invoice date to today. And now let's assign the year to be 
the year that we are inserting in our invoice date. Now we can put a filter here that will be comparing the invoice date with the year that we have assigned here. Now, whenever a new record is created that contains this year, it is going to be considered here. So let's save. And let's suppose that these years are set as 2001, 2000. So we only have one here with 2022, right? If we now create a new record, our number will be 002 because we only have two records that contain the year 2022. Now, when the year changes to 2023, it will start counting again my invoices. Now, on a field level, we have this example here. Our unit price needs to be changed whenever the product is selected. Currently, if we change our product, it is not going to change the unit price. We need to put a trigger that is going to change the unit price as soon as the product is changed. So let's assign in the trigger after update the unit price to be the same as the product price defined in the product table. And let's save. Now the product will be changed and the unit price will also follow the same information in our product. Another example could be that we have the invoice date, but let's say that we also have the payment date. So let's put it here another date and put payment date. Let's bring it up. Now, the payment date will be triggered whenever the status is changed to paid. So here, we need to first see what is the ID of the paid option. And let's put a trigger after update. So if our status is equal three, then the payment date will be set as today. OK, and save changes. If we change our status to paid, our payment date will also be changed. So in this tutorial, we talked a bit about the triggers on a database level in the options section, the triggers on a table level with the trigger on your record and trigger after update, and also the triggers on a field level with the status changing a payment date and with the unit price changing whenever the product is changed in our invoice items. Ninox.